Hey everybody, it's Will here. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another episode of the Blackware Intelligence YouTube channel. Today we're going to be continuing with our on-chain analysis tutorial series, talking about monitoring network activity today. Uh, before we dive into it, really appreciate if you could like, comment, subscribe. Let me know any other metrics that you'd like to see covered moving forward, as well as any feedback that you have on this video or any of the other videos in the series. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into it though. So first we'll start with why monitor network activity. So the reason that you would wanna monitor network activity is because it's really a low complexity way of analyzing both general market sentiment, meaning kind of you know the state of euphoria versus the ghost town of transactional activity at bottoms where no one's interested, as well as assisting in determining the significance of major market moves. Uh, and what I mean by this is basically using volume and just general transaction activity in a similar way to using technical analysis, where you can basically look at the amount of, uh, you know, any given asset, or if you're looking at futures, the number of contracts that are trading hands uh, during certain price moves to kind of gauge, um, you know, how strong of a move that is. Uh, you know, oftentimes you see volume spikes in breakouts as well as um, during significant market bottoms and, and blow off tops. So, uh, you know, we can use transactional activity in a similar way that you use volume traditionally in technical analysis. Um, more sophisticated measures of, ne of network activity can also show you the state of market profitability. And so we'll look at that as we hop into the next few slides. Uh, basically, we can gauge when there's a prolonged state of all market participants at extremely high states of profitability. That tends to be kind of a, a, a broader uh, market top signal as well as we can look at the activity from different sizes of transactions, which we'll get into as well. Uh, we can look at the breakdown of where the different, uh, you know, percentages of, of transfer volume are coming from uh, based on the size of those transactions in aggregate. And then lastly, network activity is best looked at in confluence with all measures of network activity, uh, like all on-chain metrics. I don't think you should just be looking at one thing here, look at a confluence of all of them as well as uh, in confluence of other aspects of, of market dynamics. So first we're gonna start with uh, the most basic one. This is just the number of active addresses. This is just exactly what it is. It's the number of uh, you know, addresses that are active on the network. Um, and so as you can see, um, you know, first of all, whenever, we're, whenever Bitcoin reaches these kind of euphoric blow off tops, you see that same kind of signature uh, inactive addresses. So even going back to 2011, even though that's a very small uh, blip here, price would be as well if I didn't have it in log scale. Um, but you can see, you know, this kind of spike here uh, heading into 2013, these spikes in transactional activity here as well. Um, in 2017, that was the largest one. We saw a real, you know, euphoric signature inactive addresses. And then this died back down after the bear market. Um, and early 2021, and that's when you kind of reached that, you know, peak uh, state of, of active address growth. Um, even in that second kind of double top at the end of last year, I still didn't see nearly the amount of uh, network activity that you did in early 2021, which is a theme that you'll see kind of in confluence across the board as we uh, kind of go into these different measures of network activity. Um, you know, one, one uh, I guess, market dynamic um, that, that Checkmate from Glassnode has highlighted is that, you know, if you go off of transactional activity, technically that's been in a bear market since early 2021. Um, you know, when you look at really any measure of network activity, uh, a good one that uh, is specific to Glassnode is like net entities growth, looking at the number of, you know, new uh, en entities or market participants uh, stepping into the network versus the dormant ones that are no longer uh, active. Uh, you know, you see, you saw a very, you know, distinct signature in that at the beginning of 2021. But again, across the board, really saw a lot of these things kind of peak out in early 2021, um, which to me kind of showed that that was the, you know, peak state of euphoria of the market. Um, that's active addresses. Now we're going to look at number of transactions per second. So this is the rate of transactions. So it's telling you how many transactions are, you know, coming through the network every second. As you can see, again, this spikes in, you know, uh, high levels of, of euphoria for the market here, 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 uh, all the way up into 2017, a big drawdown into the bear market, 
um, picked up into that 2019 uh, short squeeze slash uh, plus token Ponzi squeeze that was locking up supply and uh, caused that big rally up from 3K to 14K, as well as early 2021 draw down significant significantly or drew down significantly excuse my my uh, bad grammar there and then uh never really recovered back to early 2020 2021 levels as well and now we're looking at number of transactions uh so it's just telling you the amount of transactions and again same thing i don't want to sound like a broken record but very similar signature across the board uh, oops i mean to go forward oops um, across these three, you know, you see very similar signatures in them. Next, we're going to look at percent of entities in profit. So this is what we were kind of talking about on that first slide in terms of we can look at the profitability of different market participants. Um, and so for this, we're looking at entities which are, uh, you know, batched addresses based on heuristics that Glassnode uses uh, that's proprietary to them, but basically looks at the movement of different addresses and tries to kind of tag them together and say, hey, look, this looks like one individual or one entity because it doesn't necessarily I mean it's one person. It's just could be a, you know, a fund or a custodian. It's just an entity, uh, which is why that specific term is used rather than saying, you know, how many people are on the network. Um, but what you see is whenever you're in this kind of prolonged area of uh, mark participants being in, in profit, that tends to be uh, kind of this, um, you know, top uh, signal, right? Because what it's basically telling you is that whenever Bitcoin reaches all-time highs, you're near 100% of the entities being in profit by definition, right? At all-time highs, anyone who's ever bought Bitcoin at any time is in profit if they're still holding. Uh, not if they, you know, sold early, but if they're still holding and Bitcoin reaches all-time highs, they're in profit. Uh, and so that's why this this will never go higher than this gray line because, you know, by definition, you can only have 100% of the entities on the network in profit. Um, but again, whenever you kind of see this prolonged area of market participants uh, being near 100% in profit and that kind of 98, 99% range, saw this throughout 2017, that's kind of a precursor of just a general state of euphoria in the market. Uh, and then conversely, whenever this draws down significantly, uh, whenever we start getting below, you know, 50% of uh, entities in profit, that's also kind of a signature of Bitcoin kind of bottoming out in a macro sense. Um, and so you'll see, haven't lately gotten nearly as low as um, in kind of mid 2015. Um, and as you can see, over time, it seems like it's kind of making higher lows as you're seeing uh, Mark Christmas not nearly getting to as low levels of, of uh, you know, profitability uh, as kind of the earlier days of Bitcoin. Uh, but still, this kind of is a good measure to show you when we're kind of reaching these for I mean, I'm sorry, uh, capitulation, you know, kind of just bottoming out uh, in a broader sense. Next, we're going to look at total transfer volume breakdown by size. Uh, and so this is, again, something we talked about on the first slide in that we can look at all the uh, transactional activity and then we can look at how much of that transactional activity is coming from different size market participants. So we can look at how much of the volume is coming from uh, transactions that are valued at zero, $0 to $1,000, uh, 1,000 to 10,000, 10,000 to 100,000, 100,000 to 1 million, 1 million to 10 million, and then 10 million plus as the largest uh, cohort that Glassnode has. You can look at this in BTC terms, um, the reason I don't really think that you should is because obviously over time, the price of Bitcoin changes, right? So the significance of, you know, um, a billion, I'm sorry, a million, you know, Bitcoins moving at a, you know, at, at a certain point in time back in, let's say like 2013 versus now, it's obviously a significant, um, you know, difference in the actual USD value. So that's why I think it's uh, much more uh you know, it's, it's, it's much better to look at the, the USD value. Um, and so again, you'll see, first of all, that as with all the transactional activity metrics, these peak, uh, these euphoric states in the market. Um, the second is, is that over time, and this will kind of lead us to the next slide, that um, you see larger, uh, larger amounts of capital taking up a larger portion of the transactional activity. Uh, so this is just the total transfer volume breakdown by size. This next chart is looking at the relative transfer volume breakdown by size. So it's showing you the percentage 
of the transfer volume that's coming from the different size transactions. Uh, and so, as you can see, uh, before Bitcoin even, you know, had really any any price, um, most of the transactions were zero dollars to to a thousand dollars back in the early days, in, in you know, 2010. Uh, but as time has progressed, you see that a larger portion of overall transactional activity is being taken up by larger transactions. Um, in particular, um, oops, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Um, in particular, the $10 million plus transactions. Um, and so this is something we've also seen, should have thrown this chart in there, uh, is, is that, you know, kind of since early 2021, You've seen a decline and you can't really fully see this in this chart, actually, which is my bad. I probably should have thrown this in there, um, that the smaller transactions have been declining since early 2021, while the overall portion of volume from very large transactions, $10 million plus, has actually been increasing. So I think you have this interesting dynamic where a lot of the kind of speculative retail market participants have stepped out of the market or they've gone into altcoins to speculate on those and Dogecoin and, you know, all these crazy, you know, safe moon and come rocket. And um, then probably got sucked into some of these L ones as well. I just, I just don't think there's been as much of a, um, an appetite from those speculative retail market participants. Uh, a lot of which stepped in in early 2021. Um, and the converse of that is that you've seen a larger and larger portion of transactional activity, um, not only over time, but even over the last, uh, you know, over the last call it year, year and a half, going to these uh, larger entities, which to me just kind of also highlights the quote unquote institutionalization, which I know has become a bit of a meme lately, but you can see this in the transactional activity that um, these larger and larger transactions are dominating overall volume. So with that, uh, maybe just to wrap it up, if you kind of want to look back over these, these points from a high level, but um, nothing too complex today for this video. Um, just kind of wanted to give a high level and then we can go into a bit more granularity with uh, network activity uh, moving forward and also maybe ways to apply it and look at confluence with other metrics um, using it. But hope you got something out of this. Um, you know, this is kind of a, a you know, basic concept to understand if you're looking to get into on-chain um, and it's just kind of a, you know, lower tier, um, you know, uh, family of metrics that, that you can look at and apply in your analysis. Um, so hope you guys really enjoyed and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.